ESPN First News Network, celebrating over 20 years of live television sports in the Valley. This is the WKBN High School Volleyball Game of the Week. Sponsored by Stadium GM, Sheely's, and Farmers National Bank. Coming to you live from Austin Town Fitch High School, it is indeed a special presentation of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Tonight, two of the premier programs in the entire Valley will face off as Austin Town Fitch plays host to Crestview. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski, so pleased to be joined by Sabrina Talbert. And anytime you can have two tremendous volleyball programs on display as tournament time nears, this can really prepare you for what lies ahead in the postseason. Exactly. It's going to be a fun night. The crowd here is excited, getting loud, and I, I think it's a really great time for these two teams to show off what they've had. You know, they've had a lot of play already in the season, and now, like you said, as things are winding towards the tournament, we'll really see what these two teams got. Fitch ranked number 19 in Division 1 in the latest state poll. Crestview is number 8 in Division 3. Checking into this one, Crestview is 18 and 1. Fitch 16 and 2. The Rebels lost for the very first time this season to a very good Girard team. 3 0 on Saturday. So it's safe to say both of these teams are very battle tested. That can only help you as you get towards tournament time. So we're just about set to get this thing underway. Glad you're with us here on MyYTV and WKBN.com. Lots of folks also watching on the WKBN app. Fitch will serve. Simons sends it across, and we are underway here in Austin Town. Soft touch around the net, up out of the rafters. Punched back over by Jordan, and an emphatic kill! Set down by Auer! That was a great kill. She was ready at the net for that to come back over and put it right back down. Grace Auer is an all-everything for Crestview. Grace Auer leading Ohio in aces with 84. Simons leaves it, block, recovery by Jordan, and Chris Few increases the lead. It's now 2-0 in the middle of it all. Abby Emch, tall in stature, but huge in impact as well. Fast start for the Rebels. It's sent across. Simons leaves it. Into the net. Fitch on the board. That was a nice try. She didn't quite have it, but that's been Crestview's strength so far is they've had their players ready at the net, and they've just been able to jump and hit it right as soon as it comes over. Here's Kylie Folkwine with the serve and the ace. And we're deadlocked at two. And you look at these rosters, these programs aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They're talented, but very young. They're going to be around for a long, long time. Folkwine. With another serve, they'll leave it for Emch. Popped up, sent back across. Dug out by the Rebels. Soft touch at the net. Abby Emch gets it done. Rebels up 3-2 early on. You can see it's a real priority for Crestview's offense to make sure that they find Emps wherever she is on the net, and it works just like that. Jordan with authority sends it down. And it's three apiece. Joe Jordan, we've seen her, it seems like every time we've carried a Fitch volleyball match. She is truly one of the top players in the entire area. So too is Emch. It's dug out by Simons. Emch tried to throw it down with the right hand. It's sent across by Jordan Smith. Emch now to the far side, and it's Lady Hour getting it done. Rebels in business. Very good swing and an assist for Emch, I believe. They have a very active front row, Crestview does. You can see here she bump sets it to her teammate. Even if she's not the one hitting, she's very involved in the play and the offense, and that really works well for Crestview. 
Matty Black with a serve, dug out by the Falcons, but it's off the net. Rebels tack on yet another. Matty Black, the senior, serving, dug out. Now Jordan taps it up across. Dug out by the Falcons. Jordan pounds it home. You can tell that setter was really looking for Jordan. The first time she got it to her, didn't necessarily score, tipped it over. Second time, right down. 5-4 in favor of Crestview. Sent across by Jordan Smith. And the point for the Falcons. Cleaned up by Jordan Binion. And now Jordan Smith, the Falcon Jr. with the serve, sends it across. Dug out by the Rebels, punched up by Auer, and the Falcons are the beneficiary again. They take the lead. It is now 6-5 in favor of Fitch. Jordan Smith back to work. Smith right hands it across. Punched up by Auer. Simons leaves Jordan, dug out, Auer. Sent across and then dug back by Smith. Off the net, point to Crestview. A good rally by both teams, but boy, that's going to be hard for Fitch to really beat Emsch in the middle of the net on a joust like that. And now set to serve, it is Abby Emsch, just a sophomore. He'll leave it for Jordan. Played well at the net. Across the way, Auer up into the Raptors. Simons, that one dug out by Auer. Westview takes the lead once again at 7-6. There is a buzz in the building here tonight. People are well aware how good these two teams are. And Westview continues to increase the lead. It's now 8-6. Back to Emch. Emch, Crestview's leader in kills, blocks, hitting percentage, second on the team in aces. Program record holder in blocks in his season last year. Jordan pounds it home. Like we expected and like we saw before, the setter for Fitch really is going to do everything she can to make sure she finds Jordan in the front row. That time it was a back bump set to Jordan, and sure enough, it worked. Now an opportunity for Jordan. She serves it. Downey digs it out. This is our Simons will leave it. Sent back across. An opportunity for Amch. But it is a bit too wide. And the point to Fitch, it's 8-8. Eight, eight. Jordan. Pounded down, but a bit too wide. And Crestview. Well, let's see here. They're going to say it was touched. So getting an explanation is Grace Auer. And she heads back to the bench and explains. I don't know, what do you think? Difficult to tell whether or not the blocker for Crestview actually touched it, but let's see here now that Fitch is serving. 9-8, Lady Falcons, Auer, dugout, Simons, Jordan, Amch. We'll leave it for Grace Auer. Blocked by Binion. This is Etch. Great play at the net by Fitch. Binion Great. in the middle of it all again. Great defense by Fitch. They know that when Emsch is in all the time and she plays six rotations, that they're going to find her on offense, and they're ready for it on defense. We'll leave it for Auer. Binion right there again. This is Jordan, smacked back her way. Auer with another chance, pounds it home! And that makes it 
in favor of Fitch. Grace Hour, the junior with yet another kill as she continues to pile those up. This is Laney Hour. It is a family affair to say the very least. And an ace for Laney Hour. Second on the team in assists and digs. What an effort. Hour. Simons. Pounded down by Fitch's Kylie Folkwine. And it's 11 10 in favor of Fitch. A good swing offensively. We call that using the block. In which case, it's still a kill, but it just goes off the defender's hand. Lily Diltz with the serve for Fitch. Hour off the face of Diltz. That was a great dynamic wow. approach, and you could really tell how much power she had behind that ball. Take a look at this. Such great strength, great power. And we're deadlocked at 11. Back to it. Emily Downey with the serve. Simons leaves it for Folkwine. He puts it down, and it's 12-11 in favor of Fitch. Not the most powerful swing that time, but a well-placed tip is the same amount of points. It'll be just as effective. Simons with the serve for the Falcons. Great placement. That time, Hour, just with a soft tap. And it's 12 apiece. It's a great corner shot, making sure that the defense isn't too locked in right down the middle for Fitch, making sure that they know that Crestview can hit both corners and that they have to be ready to move. Grace Hour, back to it. It is dug out by Diltz. And the point to Fitch. You see this game has quickly become a game of placement. I think the last three points were scored on well-placed tips, and here you see the setter starting to take in here. 13-12, Fitch, Kylie Folkwine, a gifted server. Knuckleball across, up near the rafters. Simons leaves it, pounded down by Jordan Smith. And it's 14-12. And the kill to Smith. Folkwine sends it across. Dug out by the Rebels. Here is Amch. That one dug out by Diltz. And left at the net. Tapped across. Controlled by Fitch. For the moment, Jordan into the net. 14-13. That was an incredible defensive effort from both sides to keep that rally going as long as it did. Back and forth. These two teams have gone from the get-go. Alyssa Smotherman, senior defensive specialist, sends it across. Dug out by Diltz. Back the other way. Crestview has an answer to tie this thing at 14. If you're Fitch, you're going to want to make sure that you keep those passes off the net because so far this game, we've seen Crespi really dominate all those plays really close to the net. Smotherman sends it across. Jordan pounds it to the hardwood. Number one, Riley Simmons for Fitch is an excellent setter, and you see how quickly she can send that ball to the outside. It's before Crespi often is even jumping in the air for the block. We'll talk about Simons here in just a second, but she's only a freshman, and her resume is awesome. Amch tapped it across. Here's Jordan. Popped up into the air by Auer. Auer back across. Simons saves it. Here's Jordan again with a kill. Joe Jordan. Makes it 16 14. And boy, that vertical is impressive. 
Falcons serve. Edge blocked at the net. Jordan Binion there again. She has been awesome on the defensive side and a timeout taken 17-14 in favor of Austin Town Fitch. Your early impressions as these two teams who don't see each other a lot, they're not as familiar with one another, but one thing they do have in common, they're really good. What do you like about what each side is doing at this point? Sure, both teams so far have done a really good job with service pressure. We've seen a lot of aces so far. We've seen a lot of you know, plays get out of system right off of the first pass, making that setter work so it's harder for them to get it to their key hitters. We've seen a lot from Emp so far for Crestview. We've seen a lot from Jordan so far for Fitch. And you can tell that those setters are doing everything they can, good pass or not, to get it to those two hitters. And it's particularly important as those players continue to play six rotations that the defense keeps finding them so they know where it's most likely going to go. Of course, volleyball tonight. We have high school football back with you Friday night. The area's best football players are all part of WKBN's Big 22. It's sponsored by ASECU, a service everyone can use, and by Fred Martin Ford, where they sell for less, a lot less. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players from our valley. As we're back to it, 17-14, Fitch with a serve. Afton Roby, Emch, swings, misses, taps, whistle, four touches. And it's 18-14. Afton Roby with another serve. It's dug out by Downey. Hour. Simons leaves for Jordan. Another kill. It's just a great swing, and you can see her approach here and how much power she has behind it when she makes contact with the ball. She'll find it if it's sent to the outside. She'll find it on an out-of-system ball. She always gets behind it and just has a good, hard swing. Roby. Fitch with another point, 20 to 14. Afton Roby. Sends it across. They'll leave it for Emch. Dug out. Simons. Jordan. Blocked. Second try. Right to the hardwood. And it's 21 14 with another timeout taken. Do you like the timeout in that scenario? Absolutely. You know, once a once the 20 point threshold has been reached and this is a game to 25. You want to do everything you can if you're Crespi to kind of slow that momentum. She just came off of a good swing, didn't score, got it a second time, it scored. They've got the momentum, her team's cheering. You want to kind of pump the brakes and make sure that your team can catch its breath and, and focus back in on the next point. Both of these teams have their eyes set on a deep tournament run. So a great tournament tune up, so to speak. A year ago, it's Austin Town Fitch. They played in the district championship game. They fell to Chardon eventually, 3-0, finishing the campaign 21-4. Falcons are coached, as you can see, by Jody Bartlett. Both of these coaches, very accomplished. They have built true programs at each respective school. They have a lot to be proud of, and they hope to add to that resume before this season is all said and done. Afton Roby out of the timeout with the serve. 21-14, Emch pounds it down, but it's dug out by Folkwine. They'll leave it for Jordan again, and it'll kill. Regardless of who's setting, you know, if it's their designated setter, number one, Riley Simons, or if it's the middle hitter, maybe, Jordan Binion, number 24, they're always going to find their teammate, Jordan, number 23, to put it away. Jordan, the first in program history to 1,000 kills in her career had that milestone reached a couple of weeks ago the crest for you getting it done to cut it to 22 15. in the thick of it all maddie black crest view set across there's an ace 22 16. So Crestview looking to rally. Maddie Black, one of the Rebel seniors, 
Sends it across, dug out by Folkline. With the right hand, it's popped up. Rebel point. 22-17. Black. Another serve and another ace. 22-18, you can feel the momentum starting to build. Absolutely. Black really came in with the purpose when she checked into the game to go back there and serve. And she's done an excellent job at bringing the service pressure for her team to catch back up to Fitch here. And now it's Boston Town Fitch calling a timeout as the deficit has been cut to four at 22-18. Just underway, you'll see plenty of pink in and around the gym. It's Austin Town Fitch's pink out. You can see it even says WKBN Game of the Week on the back of those shirts. Of course, they're doing some fundraising here. The proceeds benefiting various cancer outlets in the area. A tremendous cause to bring awareness, if nothing else. And we're thrilled to be a part of it. I think you'd agree, working in the medical profession as you do. Absolutely. 22-18 as we are back to it. Maddie Black. Too strong that time. I think you and I talked about it a year ago when we worked together. That'll drive a coach insane out of a timeout, am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. Depends on the coach. One coach called a timeout hoping that would be the result. <laughs> and it was. And it was. Austin Town Fitz now trying to polish things off in the first set. 24 18 set point. Jordan Smith set to serve. Sends it across. Dug out. Emch pounds it down. It's 24 19. Emch. Boy, does she have any weaknesses whatsoever? Doesn't seem to be the case 24 19 now she will serve into the net I spoke a little too soon 25 19 the first set goes the way of Austin Town Finch we'll take a time out and bring you back with set number two that follows these words you're watching a special volleyball presentation of the WKBN high school game of the week Ballarat is more than just a place to work. Ballarat is a great place to work because of the day-to-day -day challenges, the engagement of employees, and the teamwork and collaboration between great people. To start your career, visit BallardJobsOnline.com today. For over two decades, Gary Haustu roamed the sidelines of local high school sporting events and Ohio State football games, capturing moments that will live forever. Unfortunately, Gary's battle with cancer ended in January of 2022, but his memory lives on through his work. Whether you knew him from The Valley's Playbook, a sports publication he and his brothers Chuck and Ray ran in the 90s, or as a proud member of the Bucknuts media staff, the name Gary Houstu will always have a place in local sports history. Choosing the right school isn't easy. Should you make a decision based on class size or by how many programs it has to offer? Are commitments to sports and the arts important to you? At Crestview Local Schools, we ask the question, why settle? Why not have it all? From football and soccer on our turf field to basketball and volleyball in our gymnasium and everything in between. And we are now offering an eSports program as part of our continued efforts to give our students every opportunity to follow their passions. Call today to schedule a tour of Crestview Local Schools. The Hot Dog Shop is your hometown hot dog. And we want to know, how do you like your dog? I like mine with chili. Ketchup and mustard and hot sauce. I've been coming here forever. He is a two chili and cheese hot dogs. Sauce and onions. Chili cheddar. No, ch no cheese? No. But I had a whole bunch of ketchup. Kraut and mustard. Chili? Stop in and get your hometown hot dog at a hot dog shop today. Don't wait another minute. The time for Maury is now. I can sell this one way or another right Maury, here. Maury, weekdays at 9 on MyYTV. Ballarat is more than just a place to work. Ballarat is a great place to work. It lets me utilize my skills within both mills and gives you an opportunity to grow within the company. 
start your career, visit ValorJobsOnline.com today. Find a job now at MyValleyJobsToday.com. And welcome back to Austin Town Fitch High School. A special volleyball presentation of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Austin Town Fitch leading Crestview. one nothing after taking the first set. Chad Krispinski, Sabrina Talbert with you here tonight. A former Valley Volleyball standout, former standout at Ball State in the Mid-American Conference. Do you miss playing? Oh, of course, but I love opportunities like this where I still get to watch and be involved in the game. And of course, a special shout out to my sister, Grace Mangapura, who's currently playing volleyball at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Of course, going to her games, cheering her on. No doubt. I've never yeah. really left. Of I'm course. always been here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're thrilled to have you, that's for Thank sure. Thank you. And right from the get-go, that one a bit too wide. And too deep and one nothing. Fitch with the early lead in set number two. Riley Simons, an extraordinary freshman with an ace. And she's already broken the assist season record last week. And she came into this one with 621 assists for the year. Most assist holders gain a thousand in their career. She's well on her way to 2,000. Fitch with a 2 nothing lead. But what a start to her career for Simons. But to pile up numbers like that, it's almost unheard of in many ways, especially at the Division I level. Fitch with a serve, it's dug out, pounded across. And Fitch will increase the lead to 3 nothing. A fortunate swing and a miss on that one. And we were talking with uh, Fitch's coach. She was talking earlier in the game about how they rely so much on that Riley uh, Simons for their offense because they run a 5-1 offense. Meaning she's the only setter they use the whole time. And boy, has she done a good job for them so far. And we have a whistle. Crestview is the beneficiary. Absolutely, and let's see how they use that moving forward here. Rebels on the board, trailing at 4-1. Smotherman dug out. Simons leaves. Folkwine swings, tapped over. Etch puts it down with ease. We've seen such a variety of sets given to Abby Emch so far this game. You see this one just a short quick set right in the middle we've seen a good push to the outside that emily or i'm sorry emily Emsch is abby's older sister the, who i used to watch play back in the day yeah. it's a family affair <laughs> like in you a lot said of a ways. family affair yes yes it is pardon me but abby and so far has done an excellent job this game five two in favor of fitch the serve across by kylie Folkwine. they'll leave it along the far side hour Simons, now Jordan with authority. Joe Jordan broke the record for most kills in a season last year. She's on track to break her own record this year. 350 on the season. But Crestview gets the point and it's 6-3. Maddie Black for the Rebels. Right hands it across. Dug out by Jordan. Pounded from the far right side by Jordan Smith. And Crestview digs into the deficit a little bit more, cutting it to 6-4. We've seen that called a couple times so far this game. And I think the confusion can be that um, if the ball doesn't cross the plane of the net and instead just hits the tape versus the blocker's hands and one of their players touches it again, that makes four touches, which is, of course, illegal in volleyball. 7-4 is our score. We have a veteran officiating crew, by the way. Stacy Goodman is here, Paul Maravich, Chet Cooper, and Dennis Romeo. That one dug out by Downey. Zemch. Roby leaves it. This is Jordan. 
once again. 8-4. Such great power and strength for Jordan. She has practically rewritten the record books here at Fitch for volleyball. Emch into the net. That's Binion for Fitch. It's 8-5. That was a great dig by number four, Grace Hour. You see her just instinctively reached that arm out, got the dig, that got the ball across, and ended up getting Crespi the point. Emch, Jordan, Simons. Yeah, we see that two hits called on um, number one, Riley Simons. Not a call made very often for her because she's a great setter, but uh, that just means that she contacted the ball twice, which is illegal. Amps dug out by Jordan. Simons, Jordan again! Wow, that was a great play. You see, we call that pass to attack. Jordan got a good pass to the setter and ran it right up the middle. She can hit from the outside, she can hit from the middle, and her setter knows that and gets it to her. You can see the great chemistry that these players have with each other. They're all very experienced players, playing not only in high school, but playing travel ball in other places as well. Jordan got that one turned back, but Fitch gets the point, 10-6. Another great free ball play. It was just another quick run up the middle for Jordan. We see her being a versatile player. She can hit it from the outside and the middle, and they get it to her. And leave it for Auer with an emphatic kill, and Grace Auer, the junior, continues to pile up those numbers on her resume. And now the serve by Laney Auer. That one dug out. Binion pops it up. Auer, Auer. And it's a crest few point. It's got to be a lot of fun for head coach Alicia Auer to have a chance to coach her daughters and experience all this success. Simons to Jordan. That pounded back to her. Good recovery by Fitch into the net. Falcon point. That was good awareness from Fitch. You could see it came back, hit one player, hit the other player. They did some quick math here. Look, one contact two and then they send it right over for the third. It is now 11-8. Popped up. Hour. Trying to use that smooth touch, but a little bit wide. And it's 12-8 Falcons. Here's Joe Jordan. Right hands it across. It is dug out. Pounded into the net by Katie Lissy. And it's 13-8 Fitch. Jordan will go back to work. Joe Jordan, knuckleball of a serve. Jordan, Simons, Folkwine tried to hammer that one to the hardwood, but to no avail. And it's 13-9 in favor of Fitch. Here's Emily Downey. Crestview Jr. with a serve. Over to Jordan. An emphatic kill from the far side. That's Grace Auer. You can tell that number 23, Jordan, was ready for the pass to attack, but she just had a little too much on that pass. It went right over, and Crespi was ready for it. 13-10. There's Downey. Dug out. Now Binion. Folkwine. Downey. Auer blocked. The other hour leaves it. Here's Emch. Jordan Simons. Fuck wide with a kill. Another one of those talented young players. Kylie Folkwine, just a freshman. 14 10. Sent across. Here's Hour. To the other hour. Sisterly teamwork, and it's 14-11.
Out goes Ashley Hodge. Checking back in is Maddie Black. And the serve by Grace Auer. Dug out by Jordan. Here's Simons. Folkwine. It's popped up. Good recovery by the Rebels. Downey. Simons will leave it for Jordan with a diving attempt. Emch blocked. Downey. Too far, too strong by Black. 15-11. You could tell there was a little miscommunication for Fitch on their offense. You know, who was going to run and get that ball in the middle. But eventually they were able to rally and get the point, and that's going to happen when you run a fast-paced competitive offense. Simons. Folkwine, another kill. It's 16-11. And we have a timeout taken by Crestview head coach Alicia Auer. And a wise timeout at this juncture of where we are. Narrowly closing in on the 20-point plateau in the second set. 16 to 11. Take me inside each huddle. What's each coach saying to their respective groups? I think Fitch is just going to keep doing what they've been doing. Uh, number one, Riley Simons has done an excellent job at getting that quick set to the outside, oftentimes before Crespi was even off the ground for their block. And it has just worked over and over again. We've seen them score from the outside, whether it be uh, number 23, Jordan, or whether it be 16, Kylie Folkwin. They're both, you know, just doing whatever they want over there on the outside. And I think that if you're Crestview, you just want to make sure that you can side out and keep getting good passes so that you can set up your offense. We've seen them have great attacks. We've seen a little bit less so far this game uh, from Abby Emch. So hopefully, I think they're going to try and get her involved. But in order to get the middles involved a lot of the time, you need a great pass so that the setter, like we've seen her do before, can either get her a quick middle or send it out to the outside for us. So let's see what they can end up doing here. 16-11 is our score out of the timeout. Fitch serve, Riley Simons. It's dug out. Hour cross the way to Emch, getting her involved, as you said. As predicted. You know, they want to close that gap. Now it's a four-point game. they got to get her involved again. So it's 16-12. Alyssa Smotherman. The right hands it across. It is dug out by Diltz. Pounded down. This is our Diltz, Simons, right off the pin, 16-13. And like we talked a little bit about earlier about the miscommunication from the set in the middle, you're going to have aggressive mistakes like that when that setter sends it just a little too far behind. Simons, right-handed kill by Jordan Smith. She put that one down to make it 17-13. Set to serve, it is Kylie Folkwine. Popped up and over, Simons to Jordan. Close call for Fitch. Across the way, Auer hammers it home. Laney Auer. Freshman phenom for Crestview. Puts it down. That makes it 17-14. And now here is Maddie Black. Black off the top of the net. It gets across, however. Simons, right side. Smith. Rebels dig it out. Here's Auer. Popped up. Simons. And now Smith. Good recovery by Crestview. Simons, Diltz, and Jordan for the kill. 18-14, Fitch. It's a great swing from the outside, and so far Crespi has really struggled to defend it, and it's worked well for Fitch. Afton Roby. Ready to go. Right hands it across. Dug out by Hart. This is Simons. Back to Jordan. Perfect placement. 
perfect placement. We saw the last one before this go right down the line. That's a good, sharp cross shot. She really has a great arsenal of different, you know, hitting techniques she uses to score. It's got to be a helpless feeling when you're on the other side of those, is it not? I'm sure it probably is, but... <laughs> you didn't face many of those in your time. <laughs> Too strong. And it's 20 to 14, and another timeout taken by Alicia Auer, the head coach of the Crestview Rebels. And Coach Auer, as she's talking to her team in her conversations leading up to tonight, Laney and Grace Auer have been around the program since they were both born. They're such integral parts. And she started coaching in 2004. Their older sister, Brenna, played from 2016 to 2020. Sisterly affair also. Abby Empt had two sisters, Emily and Molly, that you alluded to, also played for Coach Auer. And I think the most entertaining part that she told me is they used to dance at the games during warm-ups and timeouts with volleyball hats on their heads while watching their sisters play. So when you are pretty serious about volleyball and these young ladies that are on the floor here with these programs are, you're a lifer and it's a, it's a lot of fun. You're, you're in it right from the start. You're in it full force, are you not? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And volleyball is unique because it can be hard sometimes to get involved at a particularly young age, you know, there's always youth soccer programs or, you know, youth basketball programs, but there aren't a lot of youth volleyball programs. So oftentimes it's being the water girl, being the ball girl at the high school games is the way that you really get your first taste of, of volleyball. And modeling your game after some of the older stars of the teams that you're watching. Perfect placement there for Crestview, and it's 20 to 15. Emch. Set to serve. They'll leave it across the far side. Jordan Smith. And the point will go to Fitch, 21-15. Fitch trying to close things out here in the second set. Across by Jordan Smith. Dug out. Across the way, Hour. Now Diltz. Diltz did a great job to recover and get it back across. This is our blocked by Binion. Another shot. Soft touch that time. Jordan with a great recovery on her knees. Here's our blocked again. Binion was there. So too was Simons. Pitch's defense was ready. You could tell they knew where it was going. And I think that's just a show of really how much faith, you know, uh, number nine for Crestview, the setter, Alana Auer, has in that outside attacker that she just kept going to her and over and over again. Jordan Smith dug out. Auer blocked. Amch swing and a drive into the hardwood. And it's 22-16. If you're Crespo, you're always going to want to make sure that number 20, Abby Emsch, is involved in your offense in some way, even if she's in the back row like she is now. Lady Hour. Knuckleballs it across. Jordan pounds it down. 23-16 in favor of Fitch. In the second set. And now Jordan. Up, up, across the top of the net. And an easy point. 24-16. Few things I would imagine more frustrating than something like that. Fitch, set point. Trying to take a 2-0 lead. Not so fast, says Auer. And that's a great option. We've seen our, you know, not really have much success recently from the left pin or the outside position. So they run her in the middle and she's able to score. That's a great way to open up your offense and try something new for a play that you really want to keep prioritized in your offense. Binion. 
Now Lissy Downing. So back across by Hour. Here's Simons. Fulkwine. Dug out by the Rebels. Pounded across. Another chance for Fetch. Perfect placement by Crestview. 24-18. Oh, a little bit ago, Chad, you asked me if there was anything more frustrating in volleyball than getting one of those serves off the top of the net. That's, That's the it. one right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just a miscommunication, and I'm sure it's not going to happen again. 24-18. Downey. Dugout. Simons. Pounded down by Fulkwine to end the second set. 25-18. An emphatic finish in the second set, 25-18. We'll take a timeout and bring you back for more. You're watching live coverage of a special volleyball presentation of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. I'm Wendy Perez. When you work with a Wendy Perez team, we guarantee you exceptional service second to none. We have the key to your next home. Call Wendy Perez, a top 2% nationally ranked realtor. For almost 70 years, Gold Heating and Cooling's legacy has grown across our entire valley. Today, our growing team serves Trumbull, Mahoning, Columbiana, and the Shenango Valley, but we remain true to our core values. From our in-house dedicated dispatch team, installation and service crews, to our fine craftsmanship and our sheet metal fabrication shop. Our entire staff is ready to serve you. And we always have a truck right down the road from you. Gold Heating and Cooling, from our family to yours. Go with Gold! Find new roads to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand, Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. Stop into B&R Wholesale Tire and check out our famous custom wall of wheels. We have all the latest styles and we sell all the different brands. And since we want you to love your purchase, we always go the extra mile by showing you what your wheels will look like next to your vehicle all while you wait. Why pick out a tiny picture online that you're not sure what it will look like until the day you install it on your vehicle? We take custom wheel purchases to a whole new level. The Moransky Companies are proud sponsors of the Five Blocks of Granite and salute all area high school athletes throughout the year. I'm Wendy Perez. When you work with a Wendy Perez team, we guarantee you exceptional service second to none. We have the key to your next home. Call Wendy Perez, a top 2% nationally ranked realtor. Len Rome and Jim Lowboy, 33 WYTV News Daybreak. And welcome back to Austin Town Fitch High School. Chad Krispinski, Sabrina Talbert with you. Austin Town Fitch leading Crestview. Two sets to none in a battle of two of the area's premier programs. It's been a lot of fun being here tonight, being a part of the pink out in Austin Town. If you're Crestview now, what's your approach? You're in an early hole, looking to avoid being swept in three sets. What's your message to the Rebels as you come out for the third set? What worked for them the first set was making sure that Abby Emch is involved, you know, whether it's um, hitting from the back row, finding her in the front row, wherever she is, making sure that she's involved. You know, she's their top hitter. You got to find her on the court and you got to get her the ball. We've seen that from the setter from uh, Crestview Hour does a great job at finding her when she's in the front row as long as they have a good pass. And that's typically expected in volleyball, right? It can be hard for, to get the middle hitters involved if it's not a perfect pass, but Crestview has to work harder to get her the ball when it's not. All right, so here we go. Fitch with a serve. Riley Simons dug out by Amps. A chance for Amps to get few off to a good start. And that was just that. one nothing Rebels. Race hour, ready to go. Crestview up one zip, hour. 
Right hands it across. Two nothing Crestview. It's amazing to me the shifts in momentum and how quickly things can change. Our dug out by Diltz. Jordan. That one dug out. Pounded down. Diltz. Simons. Hammered home. A bit too strong. A and little bit of controversy on that play. Fitch is calling for the touch here. Tough to tell. Hard to tell. Popped up by Simons. Soft touch. There's Diltz. Simons. Crestview tacks on another. 4 nothing Rebels roaring out of the gates in the third set. Ray Sauer back to work. Nip the top of the net. With the right hand, it's Jordan Smith. Here is Downey into the bench. Fitch on the board. It's 4-1. Crisby might not have been able to get that last one up and bring it back over the net, but you can tell that they really came out of, of the half with a great, you know, intensified defensive effort these past couple plays. Yeah, more of a sense of urgency, it seems. Hour to Epps, the kill! So as anticipated, you can see her dynamic approach, good contact on the ball. That's a hard kill to defend. And as we expected, they got Abby Emsch involved in their offense right out of the gate here. There's Jordan Smith dug out by Black. Dug out by Simons. Here is Jordan. Popped up by Auer. Downey. Auer blocked at the net. Afton Roby. And it's 5-2. That's what she's known for is Roby, an outstanding blocker. Most kills after Joe Jordan. Leader in blocks, in fact. Amch, too strong that time. And it's 5-3. A little too long on that last one, but I doubt that They'll stop giving it to her anytime soon. They found her in the back row. They found her on the outside. They're going to keep getting her the ball here. Crestview increases its lead. It is 6-3. Good swing by Maddie Black. We've seen her really come through for Crestview in these tight spots, especially in the first set with service pressure. She just got another ace. She's really been bringing Crestview out of these these holes here and been doing a good job for him. That's what you get out of the senior leader. Maddie Black. It is 7-3. Black into the net. Just like that. That flurry of momentum goes by the wayside and it is 7-4. Here's Jordan Smith. Smith right hands it across. Hour swings along the far side. Jordan dug out by Crestview. But the Falcons prevail on that sequence. 7 5. Crestview wasn't able to keep it alive and they weren't able to get it over the net, but you better believe that at the half, Crestview's coach told them exactly where they should be standing to try and defend that outside shot from Jordan. Amch dug out. Here's Jordan. Hour. Hour. Dug out. Simons. Jordan. Picture perfect. Placement again. You see her when she goes and tries to attack that set. We see her overrun it a little bit, but she makes the best out of it. A smart play, a nice little tip that scores. Turn about is fair play because Crestview just answered right back with a soft one of its own. It's 8 6. Here's Abby Emch. Dug out by Diltz. Jordan. 
Jordan another chance. A little softer that time. It works all the same, and it's 8-7. The last two times we've seen Jordan have more success with her soft little tips than we have her hard driven balls. It seems like at the half, Crespi really, you know, changed the way they had their defensive strategy so they were able to dig those hard driven balls she gives. 8 7. Here's Amch. Into the net. We're tied at 8. So Crespi built the early lead in this third set. Fitch has come all the way back. Falcons now looking to take the lead. Jordan. That one is dug out by Hart. Here is our. That went off Jordan. And it's 9 8. Rebels up by one. Nothing that Jordan could do on that one. Simons leaves it. Falkwine drives it up near the rafters and down. Nine apiece. Here's Lily Diltz. On the serve, Diltz dug out by Emch. Popped up by Simons. Jordan, now Emch. Dug out by Diltz. They will leave it. And a great kill by Afton Roby. We've seen Fitch's offense just really be relentless so far this set. And it seems like Crestview's defense is in the right position. They just lack that extra little bit to make sure that play gets made. Oh, my, an emphatic kill by Grace Auer. That was a great swing. We've seen her have success so far from the left pin this game. We just saw her have a great attack out of the middle. Ten apiece in the third set. Fitch up two sets to none. Restview had not lost at all this season until Saturday when they fell to Gerard 3 0. Roby turned away, and it's our again. 11 10 Crestview. In fact, if I didn't already mention this, Crestview had not lost a set until last week. And then they fell 3-0 to Gerard over the weekend. Simons, Jordan, too strong. 12-10. We've seen that a couple times so far this set. Some of the, the biggest hitters from both teams here, like Abby Emsch, uh, Jocelyn Jordan, we've seen them have good contact with the ball, but the ball just goes a little bit out of bounds each time. It's a third set, and they just keep taking aggressive swings. That's going to happen. Popped up. Set back up by Folkwine Jordan. They'll leave it for our Rebels point. Thirteen ten. She's a great aggressive player offensively at the net and defensively. She's just ready for anything. Downey has been efficient. Serving. Simons leaves it. Folkwine a swing and a drive. Our Jordan. Simons. Pounded down by Afton Roby. And it's 13 to 11. Great readiness and offensiveness at the, at the net for Fitch's Afton Roby, but you got to give credit to number nine for Crestview. Alana Auer, she was ready for that dig, and that was a hard-driven ball. Diltz, Simons. That's Jordan Smith. Rebels recover. Here's Auer. But Fitch cuts it to just one at 13-12. Riley Simons on the serve. They will leave it for our Jordan. Now this is Folkwine. Another chance for Etch. He pounds it down. And it's 14-12 in favor of Crestview. The 
Ray Sauer. Ready to serve. Pounds it across. Simons leaves it right side, and it's blocked. But Fitch gets the point, 14-13. Falcons will try to tie it up. Kylie Folkwine. Right hands it across. Hour, a swing by Lissy. This is Jordan finishing. 14 apiece. Here we see her jump and dynamically approach a high out of system ball. Those can be hard balls to score off of. Sometimes the strategy is just to get it in, but you never see her do that. She always goes for the big swing. And the serve is a bit too strong by Folkwine, and Crestview takes a 15 14 lead. Sent across by Smotherman. Simons. Now Jordan! If you look at the matchup in the front row, you've got Jordan who's just been having a heck of a night for Fitch, as she has all season every single game. But when she's lined up on the left pin, she's going up against number five, who of course is the Maddie Black for Crestview, and she's going up against Emsch. And you see her really kind of exploits that block trying to stay away from Emsch in, in her high hands every time she can. Emsch with another key contribution, giving Crestview a 16-15 lead. Chet Cooper making the call. Down on the floor. Maddie Black back to work. Trying to build on a one-point lead with the ace. Miscommunication there. And it's 17-15, timeout called by Fitch. So Crestview certainly has some life. Now with a two-point lead here in the third set. Following tonight's action, we will select a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact during our game of the week. Our Player of the Game Award is sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. So Austin Town Fitch is hopeful that that interview will take place sooner rather than later, but Crestview has had something to say about all that here in the third set. Currently with a two-point lead. These two teams coming into tonight's action with a combined record of 34 and 3. So out of the timeout, Maddie Black is ready to go and she sends it across. Dug out by Jordan. Here's Simons from the right side, pounded down by Smith. The chance for the Rebels to get it across. Diltz. Simons and Jordan. That was a great free ball play. So Fitch just bumped it nice and easy over the net. There was a little bit of miscommunication, and Fitch really took advantage of it. It was a perfect pass from Libero. Uh, number 13, Lily Diltz, and the setter was able to get it right to 23, and she was just able to hit over the block and really a beautiful kill down the line. Served by Jordan Smith. This is our. Dug out by the Falcons. Here's Simons to Jordan, into the net. That's Eight. always always a risky run when you try and take a big swing on a ball where you're kind of leaning backwards and it's out of system and ugly, but most of the time we see that work for her. Didn't work that time, 18-16. Diltz, right off the forearm, and it's 19-16, Crestview. Now Abby Emch. Hard to believe she's just a sophomore, but she puts it across for the ace. 20 to 16. She's tremendous now and has such a bright future and she's hoping to keep this one alive here in the third set. Jordan hammers that one home to cut it to 20 to 17. 
an easy choice for Fitch. You know, you, you've had a couple serves not go your way. You want to get a side out. You want to get it to Jordan. He'll leave it for Epps. Blocked. But the point to the Rebels. 21-17. Great attack, and she knows that Fitch's block is going to follow her wherever she goes, and she's able to tool it right off their hands for a point. Laney Hour handling the serving duties. It's dug out. Here's Simons. Emphatic kill by Folkwine. 21 18. Back and forth we go. Sent across by Diltz. Diltz digs it back out. Riley Simons in the right place at the right time with a tip, and it's 21-19. Fitch looking to rally late in the third set. Diltz, Emch, Hour, back to Emch. She finishes again, 22-19. Emily Downey. Ready to go. For Crestview. Dug out by Jordan. Simons. Soft touch by Falkwine. Dug out by Jordan. More. Solid play around the net. And it's 22-20. Simons continues to get it done. Just a freshman. Simons with a serve. They'll leave it for hour. And it's a bit wide. And it's 22-21. And the timeout now has been taken. In a one-point situation, we'll call it that at the moment. Crestview not resting on its laurels just yet. We've seen a lot of crazy things happen. A few times we've worked together, and so we'll see how this one plays out. WKBN Sports Team 27 has you covered 24 hours a day with in-depth coverage at WKBN.com and the WKBN app. There you'll find all the latest high school scores, highlights, feature stories, and a lot more. Download the WKBN mobile app today. So Fitz trying to close this thing out and pick up what would be for the Falcons. Win number 17, Crestview looking to avoid a second straight defeat. Crestview has won the district championship in each of the last three seasons, posting a record of 73 and six during that time span. But the other hands full here tonight at Fitch. Simons with the serve, popped up by Downey. Sent across and then dug out Simons. This is Emch, Simons, Diltz, and Jordan. Down he digs it out. This is Auer, Simons. Popped up and down. Afton Roby. What a great rally between these two teams. You could see the, the defensive intensity pay off, especially for Fitch and Afton Roby's really been an active role in their defense at the net all night long so far. This is Simons with the serve. Amch sends it back with authority. And that one goes about six rows into the stands. 23-22. Grace Hour now to serve. Dug out by Diltz. There's Simons and Jordan blocked by Epch. Set point for Crestview. Hour back to work. The ace. 
Crestview takes set number three, 25 to 22. Couldn't get much better than that in terms of placement. And we'll be back after this. You're watching live coverage of a special volleyball presentation of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Coca's Pizza, your high school football headquarters. Come to pregame with half off select appetizers in our dining room starting at 5 p.m. Also, want to stay for the game? We'll be playing it live. That's Coca's Pizza. We serve it hot. Reliability. Innovation. Scale. These three values are those we look forward to in our business and in our team. If you're ready for a reliable employer who looks constantly to think outside the box in big ways, we're ready for you. Apply now. Help us push the envelope and deliver success. Envelope one. Take that one extra step. For over 75 years, the Newcastle School of Trades has been teaching America's trades. We are the Newcastle School of Trades, and for 75 years, we've been your trade school. At Walden Management, we rent apartments, but we sell quality, privacy, and convenience. Quiet, comfort, and affordability are what you'll find in our convenient Austintown and Columbiana locations. Studio, executive, and senior living apartments at Westchester Square, Westchester Commons, Westchester Executive, and Columbiana Manor provide independent living apartments that feel like home. Come be a good neighbor in our community of good neighbors. For more information, visit WaldenManagement.com. Breaking news can happen at any moment. That's why you can count on us. We update you on the go. Download the 33WYTV News app today. Coca's Pizza, your high school football headquarters. Stop in after the game to enjoy some great drink specials and food specials. Or want it delivered right to your door or your place. Coca's Pizza, we serve it hot. Brandon JC's weeknights on 33WYTV News. A great night here in Austin Town. We greet you from Austin Town Fitch High School. A special volleyball presentation of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Crestview stays alive, winning set number three, 25 22. Fitch leads this one two sets to one as we welcome you back. Chad Krispinski, Sabrina Talbert with you. It is the pink out you see on the benches. And you even see a little pink in our score bar at the very bottom. All of this for breast cancer awareness. Proceeds from some of tonight's festivities will go to that very important initiative. Way too strong from Fitch, and it's 1-0 Crestview. And the serve is sent across by Grace Auer. Jordan, they'll leave it for Epch. Blocked! Afton Roby has been tremendous in the middle tonight, but she's done that the entire season. And we're tied at one. Here is Riley Simons. Dug out by Downey. Across for Epch. Blocked again. Popped up, sent across, dug out by Jordan. Here is Simons. What a sequence here. Perfect placement in the corner. It's 2-1. Tipping it for her didn't work the first time, but she was able to, you know, expand the range, get it deeper into that corner, and it sure worked the second time. There's Alyssa Smotherman into the net, two apiece. There is Kylie Folkwine. There 
Here's Auer. Black dug out by Diltz. Here's Jordan. Just did clear it. And it's a 3-2 Austin Town Fitch lead. Kind of an off-speed attack. You can tell it didn't hit her hand where she wanted it to, but still scores. All counts the same. Folkwine as her serve popped up into the rafters. Have to get it across, and that didn't work so well for the Rebels. And it's 4-2 Fitch. It's Kylie Folkwine. Off the top of the net, it cleared it. Empt from the Raptors and back down 4-3. What a good attack. She was able to collect herself, jump and approach off of that second contact after the ball hit the tape. That's just great aggressiveness offensively and always being ready. Maddie Black ready to go. Dug out by Jordan. Pounded down by Jordan Smith. And it's 5-3 Fitch. And now Afton Roby will serve for the Falcons. Roby knocks it across. Amped. Chet Cooper makes the call at 6-3. Get another look at it. As we're back to live action, Grace Hour, Laney Hour. They'll leave it for Jordan for another kill. And it's 7-3, Fitch. If you're Crespo, you really need a side out right now to, to break this rhythm. Let's watch them try and go to Abby Emch this time. Amped, blocked, 8-3. And a very prompt timeout taken by Alicia Auer. She doesn't like the way things have started here in the fourth set. So 8-3 is our score. The stoppage in play and the timeout gives us an opportunity. To remind you, the WKBN's Big 22 includes the five blocks of granite, which honors the top high school football linemen in the Valley. It is sponsored by the Moransky Companies and by Coca's Pizza. They serve it hot. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players from in and around the Valley. Chad Krasminski, Sabrina Talbert with you. It's a good crowd, a great cause tonight, and a great match overall between two really talented teams that I think we both agree will have a shot to make a nice deep tournament run. Both of them state ranked coming in. Fitch number 19 in Division One in the latest state poll. Crestview eighth in D3. That was released just in the last couple of days. Out of the timeout, hour. That one is dug out. Simons gives. Jordan pounds it, but is rejected. And it's 8 4. Empt with an opportunity now. Dug out by Jordan. And off the fingertips and the wrist of Jordan Smith. That's just what Crestview needs right now. Someone to get back behind the line and apply some good service pressure to Fitch right now. 8-5, Emch with another serve. <laughs> Communication problem there. It drops again. It's 8-6, Crestview. Emch cuts it to a two-point deficit. Simons, now Jordan. And the point to Fitch. 9-6. Jordan Smith ready to make the approach. Downey digs it out. 
Epch, way too strong that time. And it's 10 6. Jordan Smith back to work. Downey. It's popped up in the air. Sent back across by Auer. Jordan, another chance. This is Simons. Jordan. And the point goes to Crestview. It looks like from the up official, they're calling Jocelyn Jordan in the net on that last play. And you can see as she lands, she is a little bit close to it. Most likely violated it. So that was going to be a point for Crestview. And it is 10-7. In favor of Fitch, the serve from Laney. Hour. Diltz digs it out. It's popped up, and Diltz will get it back across. Emch. They'll leave it for Hour. Dug out by Smith. Hour again. Now to Emch. There's Joe Jordan. Hour. To the other Hour. And now Diltz. Jordan. And it is now a an 11-7 Fitch lead. We saw Crespi really kind of struggling that last play there to get a good clean pass set kill. They would have to tip it or do something out of system, but not that time. No, no trouble whatsoever in that one, and it's 11-8. Downey is ready to go for Crestview. Emily Downley, Downey, the junior. Dug out by Jordan. And that one by Folkline is wide, and it's 11 9. Here comes Downey again. Dug out. There's Simons. And Binion. Some soft touch from Simons. And the point goes to Austin Town. Fitch was Grace Hour in the net as well that time. It looks like there's another net violation called, which you would expect to have when both teams are playing super aggressive defense at the net. This one left for Hour, dug out by Jordan Smith. Now Jordan. Nice recovery by the Rebels. Blocked by Binion. I beg your pardon, that was Roby. The Crestview cuts into the deficit even more so. And it is 12-10. Grace Hour. Now with the serve, there's Jordan, Simons, Diltz, Emch, rejected by Roby. There's Simons, tapped back across, Jordan, Simons, an emphatic kill, too strong, and it's 12-11. Crestview's defense just keeps applying that pressure to Fitch's offense, and you see it cracking a little bit. These hitters are taking big swings, but it's too big sometimes, especially the last couple we've seen. The Fitch lead is down 2-1. The ball rolled up into the Raptors, stayed up there a little bit extra, and Emch sends that one back as well to tie things up at 12. And a timeout has been taken by Austin Town Fitch head coach Jody Bartlett. You can really see it's been an emphasis for Crespi this set to come out with defensive intensity and it's really paid off. In the front row with their blocks, in the back row, they've just been keeping all these hard driven balls so far that have scored. They're keeping them alive and they're keeping them in play. The area's best football players are all part of WKBN's Big 22. The Big 22 is sponsored by ASECU, a service everyone can use. And by Fred Martin Ford, where they sell for less, a lot less. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players 
from the Valley. Chad Krispinski, Sabrina Talbert with you tonight. On this Monday night, a tournament tune-up, if you will. Crestview and Fitch hooked up in a good one. Fitch leads this one two sets to one. But Crestview looking to force the decisive fifth set. But back and forth we've gone here in set number four. Dug out by Smith. Pounded down by Roby. There's Emch. Here's Simons. Folkline. They'll leave it for Emch. Simons feeds Jordan. It hangs in the rafters. It's bumped back over. Here's Roby blocked by Emch. And Crestview takes the lead. There's that defensive intensity that you can see from Abby Emch. And you can see a little bit in, in Fitch's attackers. You've seen more tips, more roll shots, not as aggressive. Into the net, 13 apiece. Now here's Riley Simons. The freshman phenom, right hands it across. They'll leave it for Emch, blocked by Roby. Fitch back out in front, 14-13. I think that's okay for Ems. You can see her telling her teammates, my bad, my bad. I wouldn't expect her to stop taking big swings anytime soon. I think she's still going to stay aggressive on offense here. Riley Simons with the serve. Emp sends it back across, blocked again by Roby. Emp, another back. And the point goes to Austin Town Fitch as Maddie Black unable to get it up across, and it's 15 13. You can see Crestview's coaching staff a little upset with that last one from Fitch not being called for two hits from the setter. Riley Simons with a serve. Downey, this one tapped up over, and the point to Crestview. And a timeout has been called. It is 15-13. I beg your pardon, the point to Austin Town Fitch to make it 16-13. As we have a timeout called, as we inch ever closer to the possibility of this thing ending if Fitch comes out on top. But this one has been a bit back and forth since the start of this fourth set, I'd say. Coming up when we're done here tonight, we will select a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact during our game of the week. Our player of the game award is sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. So out of the timeout, 16-13. Riley Simons. Has the ball, and is ready to go. So lets it fly. This is over to Emch. And the point to the Falcons, 17-13, as it was wide. Simons lets it fly once again, they'll leave it. On the near side. Diltz, here's Jordan, Downey, Epch. Another opportunity for the Rebels with the right hand, it's Lissy. Here's Jordan, and now Downey, opportunity for Black, Diltz digs it out. Folkwine, couldn't get that one to drop, Epch pounds it down. A good swing from Emch. We've seen her take a couple from the left pin. They haven't fallen for her. She's hit him out of bounds. They find her in the middle. She connects, and it was a great kill. 17-14, the plot thickens here. 
It's knocked across by Smotherman. That was Jordan Smith. And it's 18-14, Fitch. Another great swing for Fitch's offense. We've really seen them, with the exception of that aggressive kill, these last couple of points just sit back and keep the ball in play and, and keep that kind of soft pressure on Crestview. Now we see their offense come alive again with these hard swings. Good looking play by Maddie Black. And it's 18-15, just out of the reach of the Falcon player. Here's Black. Fitch up three. Too strong. 19-15. Afton Roby with a serve for Fitch. They'll leave it for our. And she finishes. 19-16. Abby Amp just done it all for Crestview here tonight. The serve. Simons just out of her reach. It's set back and it's 19-17. That was a good play by Madison Davis for Crespi. We saw her ready at the net, and she was ready to put that ball right back over. Jordan. It seems like we have another net violation call for Crestview, so point to Fitch. So it's 20 to 17 now. Jordan Smith with the serve. They will leave it for our great kill by Grace Hour. And it's 20 to 18. Diltz couldn't handle it. Laney Hour with the serve. This is Jordan. She puts that one down. Another off-speed shot from Jordan, and we've really seen her utilize those off-speed tips more so this set, and it's working for her. She's scoring. 21-18 is our score. They will leave it for our! Another one hammer to the hardwood. Grace Auer makes it 21-19 in this fourth set. Emily Downey. Sends it across. Popped up by Jordan. There's Smith. Folkwine. Another chance for our out of the kill. Another beautiful free ball play. Fitz just had to free ball that one over after some miscommunication on the serve receive. And Crespi really took advantage of it. Got it to our who put it away on the outside. That was a great kill. 21-20. Fitch by one in the fourth set. Downey with a serve. This is Riley Simons. And it's 22-20. Really the first time we've seen her be aggressive offensively yet this set, but it was the perfect way to kind of change the momentum and get her team back behind the service line. Lily Diltz with a serve. Dug out by Downey. They'll leave it for Hour. Hour puts it down. 22 21. Crestview not going away in any way, shape, or form. Grace Hour knocks it across, dug out by Jordan. Emphatic swing by Folkwine. And Fitch, when it's all said and done, comes away with a point, 23-21. Boy, that was a great dig, though, by Crestview's offense, even though they weren't able to come up with the point. Their defense has really been locked in. Riley Simons with a serve, dug out by Downey. Here's Empch. Open it across. Folkwine. 
Dug out by Auer. This is Emch. Simons feeds it. Smith too strong. 23-22. This is an incredibly important serve as Crespi goes back to serve here. And it's Alyssa Smotherman. A rebel senior. Dug out by Diltz. Here's Simons! And it is match point now for Fitch. Simons getting it done late in this fourth set. Kylie Folkwine to serve for the Falcons. Dug out by Downey. They leave it for Emch. Into the rafters, Simons. That one will fall. Boy, he got hung up into the rooftops, and it's 24-23 now. Crestview will try to tie things up. Matty Black fires it across. There is Diltz. This is Jordan for the win. 25-23. Austin Town Fitch comes away with the victory. Three sets to one, and what better way to end it than with Joe Jordan celebrating a huge victory. Final in this one, Austin Town Fitch three, Crestview one. We will visit with our player of the game after this on the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Ballarat is more than just a place to work. Ballarat is a great place to work. They have an internship program that allowed me to learn skills and upon graduation offered me a full-time position. Start your career, visit ballartjobsonline.com today. Spitzer Chevy Lordstown, where you can get Panda prices on every vehicle on our lot. Plus, enjoy Panda Paw protection with our Spitzer Shield, featuring unlimited time and miles, with our lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty, and much more. Don't be scared, come and say Spitzer, our world revolves around you. Choosing the right school isn't easy. Should you make a decision based on class size or by how many programs it has to offer? Are commitments to sports and the arts important to you? At Crestview Local Schools, we ask the question, why settle? Why not have it all? Our new K-12 campus is under construction now, which will bring more collaborated learning environments, updated technology, and more opportunities to grow our abilities to serve our students. So, are you ready to be a rebel? Call today to schedule a tour of Crestview Local Schools. MCCTC is an option for students in 10th grade to make that decision for 11th and 12th grade. Students typically come to us because they want a different way of learning. They really want to get working with their hands. We have waiting lists for the majority of our programs by March. If you are interested in coming to the Career Center, think about it early. Feel free to call or email anytime to schedule your private tour. We can't wait to meet you. Your job search just got easier at MyValleyJobsToday.com. Search right now at MyValleyJobsToday.com. Valorec is more than just a place to work. Valorec is a great place to work because there's wonderful people to work with, good career opportunities, and a great sense of accomplishment when you create a quality product. Start your career, visit ValorecJobsOnline.com today. Adam Clayton, 33 Pinpoint Weather. Well, the celebration is on here in Austin Town. Austin Town Fitch knocks off Crestview three sets to one in a battle of two perennial area powers and two state ranked teams. Hi again, everybody. Chad Prispinski with you. It's now time to select our player of the game. Our player of the game award is sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. Tonight's player of the game is Joe Jordan, and she joins us now. And Congratulations on a big win. Thank you. Two really good programs here that are among the best in the area and the state of Ohio. To knock off Crestview and the talent that they have, how's it feel right now to you? Um, it was just a great feeling because last time we had game of the week on our court, we got swept in three. So we knew we had to come out here and Crestview has some great girls and it, we knew it was going to be a great game. And if we came into the game like, oh, we're going to win this. Oh, like this is going to be an easy game. We would have got 
whooped. But we came in and we worked our butts off. Tell me about your performance here tonight. You've done it your entire career, your record-setting career, I might add. The first in Austin Town Fitch history to 1,000 career kills. How special has it been to have a career like you have had here and to accomplish all that you have accomplished as an individual player here for the Falcons? Um, I'd say, like, that's one of my great, like, things I'm proudest about myself because I always try and carry it in a humble and hardworking way because I know I've worked for everything I've had and it just feels so good for all that to pay off and to be able to share it with my teammates and my family and everyone at Fitch because Fitch is a big, big family. You come into this one now and now you end with a record of 17 and two on the season. And I know you as a team, I've talked to your head coach and I know what high hopes you have for what lies ahead in the tournament in a few short weeks. How deep of a run, how big of a run can this team make here when postseason play rolls around? I mean, right now we're just looking at sectionals. We have to take it game by game, but we are trying to get back to district championship for third year in a row. It has been my biggest goal to win a district championship. After getting beat the past two years and swept three sets the past two years, that has been my main goal. And I think about it probably every night before I go to bed because I literally just, I want to win that so bad. And that's what we've been working for all season. Well, congratulations on a great win tonight. Thank congratulations you. on a great performance. And we wish you all the best in the rest of the regular season and the upcoming tournament. Thank you. That is our player of the game, Joe Jordan. A tremendous performance as Austin Town Fitch tops Crestview by a final of three sets to one. We'll visit with the Austin Town Fitch head coach after this. You're watching live coverage of the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Looking to sell your home? Call Classic Real Estate for hometown service, values, and expertise. Locally owned since 1969. Sell your home fast. Call Classic Real Estate at to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand, Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. If you're hiring, we can help. Post your job with us right now. Go to myvalleyjobstoday.com. Looking to sell your home? Call Classic Real Estate for hometown service, values, and expertise. Locally owned since 1969. Sell your home fast. Call Classic Real Estate at 330-757-8855. Hannah Stetler, 33 Pinpoint Weather. Tonight, Austin Town Fitch knocks off Crestview three sets to one here on Pink Out Night in Austin Town. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski, so pleased to be joined by the head coach of the Austin Town Fitch Falcons, Jody Bartlett. And coach, congratulations on a, a really big win against a quality program. Your thoughts coming out of this one, a tournament tune-up, so to speak, with two teams that are ranked as two of the top in the state of Ohio. No, it, it was a great match. They are a tough team. They did not let up the entire time. They made us work for every point we earned, and they definitely challenged us at the net, both as they were attacking and blocking us. Tell me about your senior leader, Joe Jordan, and what makes her such a special player. She seems to continue on. It started early in her career, and, and each and every time out, 
she's the player that drives this Falcon team. What makes her so special? Yeah, she absolutely is. You know, her drive and her determination and her attitude, uh, she works so hard and she's so positive. And, you know, when the team, when we're having a rough moment and we're not, things aren't going our way, she encourages everybody. And uh, she just sets a great example for the other girls. Tell me about this team in particular. You guys have continued to experience success. Now 17 wins on the year, a state ranking. What do you love about this group here this fall here in 2022? Well, this group is a really young group. So we have two starting freshmen that are six rotation players. They are doing an awesome job. And I love that the other girls have accepted them and you know they're they're helping them become part of the team and you know really showing them the culture that we have here at Fitch and um, I, I just think as a whole the chemistry has continued to get better throughout the season and, and they played great tonight. Joe Jordan told us about her goals ahead tournament play is not really far away just a few short weeks and yeah. again you'll be right in the thick of it again. What are your, your hopes and dreams for what this Falcon group here this fall can accomplish? Yeah, well, we've been talking since the beginning of the season with goals. You know, number one, we wanted to, to win the conference, and we have one more conference match tomorrow to secure that. Um, you know, we wanted to get to districts, to the championship, like we have the last two seasons, and our hope is to be able to move beyond that. So we have to take it one match at a time. Um, but, you know, that's that's something that we would all love to see happen. And coach, I see on your shirt there, is that a milestone that's listed there? Tell yeah. us what that's all about. Give us the yeah. background there. Yeah, so when at the beginning of the year as we shared goals, I told the girls what my personal goals were, and one of them being that I was hoping to get my 100th win. I knew going into the season I needed 17 for that to happen. I had really hoped it would happen this season uh, with Joe being a senior. She's been a starter for me since her freshman year, and uh, it has been awesome to just see her grow over the years. and you know, be able to be a part of of her time here at Fitch High School. So I'm really happy it happened this season with her. Well, Coach, we're thrilled to be here and celebrate your 100th career win. Thank and you. congratulations for that. Thanks for joining us. And we wish you all the best here the rest of the regular season and into postseason play. Thank you. That's Jody Bartlett, the head coach of the Austin Town Fitch Falcons. We'll wrap it up when we come back on the WKBN High School Game of the Week. Teal College, a creative, energetic place that's rooted in academic excellence, innovation, and tradition, where motivated students become motivated graduates, where so much is so close. Teal College, that's where. Locally owned and operated, Sheely's relaxed shopping experience means browsing and lounging is always encouraged. Find flex deal and more at Sheely's Furniture and Appliance, because the best things in life happen at home. We're serious about football at Fred Martin Ford, but it's our customers that matter the most. And we got a deal for you. New Echo Sport 4x4s. Lease yours today for just $299 per month. And that's with no money down. Come see our full lineup of new Fords and save with interest rates as low as 0.9%. Our team at Fred Martin Ford is your best defense against high prices because we sell for less, a lot less. Your first home. Thanks, Dad. You liked Amber, my banker from Farmers National Bank. I used their mobile mortgage app. Awesome user interface. Interface? What about good old face-to-face? -face? Farmers Banking Tech is great. Give it a try. What if I have questions? That's what's cool about a bank that's not just online. You can talk to real local people. Oh, like Amber. Dad joke. That's not a dad joke. Farmers, fiercely local, fiercely loyal. Real cases, real families in crisis. I'm Judge Rhonda Wills, and that's my ruling. Relative Justice. Weekdays at 12 and 12.30 on MyYTV. Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success, where so much is so close. Good news. Teal College is now enrolling for fall 2023. Enjoy an incredible college experience close to home. Apply today at teal.edu. WYTV.com, your home for community news. Great night here in Austin Town. Austin Town Finch tops Crestview by a final of three sets to one. 
as Austin Town Fitch picks up win number 17 and the 100th career victory of head coach Jody Bartlett. Chad Krispinski, Sabrina Talbert back with you as we wrap this one up. Your final thoughts. It was a lot of fun. Two really good programs that we saw here. Oh, man, it was a lot of fun. What a great game. And you couldn't ask for a better fourth set. It was point for point back and forth between the teams. But in the end, Fitch had some you know, key changes down the line. They eliminated their errors. And a lot of that was the attacking errors that we saw earlier in the game. They were able to make some smarter shots, some off-speed shots, some tips. We weren't seeing really the thundering hits anymore from key players uh, like Jocelyn Jordan. She was able to make some smarter plays. And, and it paid off for them. And then, of course, their setter got involved late in the game with her aggressive tips and her taking it over on two. And boy, that really came in big for them down the line. And it was enough to, to finish out the game. Indeed it was. So Fitch now with 17 wins and Crestview Falls for just the second time this season, dropping to 18 and two. We're back with you Wednesday night. Should be a lot of fun over in Cortland as the Lakeview Bulldogs will play host to Mineral Ridge. That should be another highly competitive volleyball matchup. We'll be on the air live at 7 o'clock on MyYTV, and we'll also stream it live for free on the WKBN app. So, for my broadcast partner, Sabrina Talbert, and all of us at WKBN, my name is Chad Prispinski telling you once again the final score, Austin Town Fitch tops Crestview by a final of three sets to one. Till Wednesday night, so long, everybody, from Austin Town.